higher teaching and he gave a summary. He gave a summary <laughs> at the end of his summary. I said, but sincerely, not everybody is going to be a professor really in this world. And I remember mentioning it to his wife later when we, when we met. And she said, yeah, you know, Professor has a, has the capacity to listen and grasp a lot of things in a very short space of time. He it rebuked me. I said, me, what I haven't had properly. I usually go back to the YouTube video, to the YouTube, the HRA YouTube channel, and even fill in my gaps. But he professor didn't have where to write, but he got all the points. What am I saying to you, the number of students that has logged on? That students, we need to up our game. We need to take it to another level. If a professor listens to these sessions every day, me, myself, I, th I think I've attended all the character building sessions. Probably I missed one when I was in the UK. I think I was in an underground train. I've attended all of them. But people, I'm not young. I'm not young. I, me, I, I say my age, I'm 50. I turned 50 in November. I'm not young. But each of these sessions adds on something of value to me. So members, back to where I started, my request is do not come to character building alone. 10 minutes before the session, send our WhatsApp messages to your friends, the inner, your inner circle, your discussion group. Tell them, guys, character building is starting. Can we log on? Let's go into character building today and learn something. That's my submission tonight. And I come in good faith. I come to speak to you as a mother. I come to speak to you as a person who is benefiting and I'm saying, don't miss the cake. God bless you as we prepare to listen to our speaker tonight. Toera already said he is in the house. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much, our Dean, for those uh, wise words. I think it's clear for everyone. Uh, we hope to improve in the next session. Uh, right now, let me call upon Professor Michael Kawea. Hello. Good evening. Prof. Hello. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Biamukama, uh, for those words. At times, we need to hear uh, words of rebuke, uh, words, uh, strong words uh, pushing us to go on. Today, uh, we are going to learn about being result oriented. Everything we do in life, remember the law which says that for every thing, for every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Everything you do results into something, either good or bad. There is nothing you do which does not have an effect, which has a zero effect. Whenever you apply force on something, you cause something to move. So the reason we exist in life is to produce results. And one time, one time, uh, we are going to be held accountable. Somebody mute. One time we're going to be held accountable uh, for everything we've done in this world. But also one time you'll be, we shall be held accountable for what you have done in actuary, either as a lecturer, as an administrator, or as a student. We are all expected to produce results. And so to me, this is, uh, I look forward to listening to uh, this talk with a lot of eagerness and anticipation on how I can be more result oriented and would not have a better person than the Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi we trust that the Lord who has spoken through him in the in the previous sessions is also going to speak through him and uh, and to us. And so let us pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity uh, to learn about this very important value of being result oriented. This core value. We pray that you may speak to um, Reverend Dr. Canon Dr. John Senyonyi that you may speak through him so that he can speak to us. You are very 
your very words, your very thoughts, that you may convey them in the way you would wish him to convey them. And that, Lord, that those words will cause a change in our attitude, in the things we do, yes, and also cause us to produce results uh, at every uh, job we are called to do, either as students or as administrators or as lecturers, that we shall all as a community be result-oriented. We pray that uh, people will take this seriously and that uh, many students will join on and that this will be a life-transforming session. We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So over to you, Reverend Colonel Dr. John Senyonyi. We are eagerly waiting to learn from you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kawoya, and uh, thank you also, the Dean, and Tawera, welcome back. We didn't have you last week, if I remember correctly. Now, I'm not very sure, actually, if Canon Dr. Ruth has made it yet, uh, because uh, she has had a long meeting. We were together, but I left her where she, where we were. And for me, I came home. So she has, she's actually still in Kampala. Uh, but it's a joy once again to come back. I left her to lead the other two sessions because my own plate was full at the time. But I'm glad to be back. May I just add a word to what the dean was saying? And uh, uh, just by way of encouraging the students, one of the things that I always find we are very lazy about are those things that have to do with growing or developing or nurturing our character. If it is making money, we are very hard working. And so even as we talk about result-oriented, and this is a character-building session, May I ask you to pay particular attention to the importance of developing your own character, that it may become uh, a, a, the kind of character that will make you, that will give you success. So I am going now to start uh, sharing with you. I do not need to say much more than that. Oh dear, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do I want to be able to share the slides, but for some reason doesn't seem to be showing me. Um, so I may have to just uh, to just continue with that as it is. I hope you can see the slides there. So I may just have to continue with it as it is, and uh, possibly if I see it. Yes, uh, we can. We can see. It. We can see. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. At least you can see it. Now, I just wanted to have a full, uh, full view, but for some reason, it's not giving it to me at this point. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, we'll yeah, see. I'll you because I got you, Miss Cohen. <laughs> okay. Um, so today we are going to be sharing about core value three, and that core value is result oriented. Result oriented and that's what we'll be showing today and we'll be talking about oh dear what is happening okay <laughs> there is something that is a bit funny here but anyway okay so we are talking about result oriented and um let me just recap a little bit we, the accurate core values have been abbreviated for us into an acronym. And that acronym reads CRISTE or Christ E, um, whichever you may want. And so, and these are the core values. And as you can see, the Christ E actually stands for. Um, Oh dear, stands for, hmm, my dear, I don't know what's happening with my thing. 
okay, stands for the first letter in each of the core values. There's Christ-centered professionalism, there's honesty, um, there is uh, result-oriented, even if I don't go into too much detail, uh, there is integrity, and admittedly, almost every institution that has core values tends to have something about integrity. That's a very normal thing. They tend to have something about integrity. So that's what, uh, then we do have stewardship and we do have timeliness and then enthusiasm. Now, at this particular moment, we have covered so far these core values, four core values. So once we have covered uh, today's result-oriented core value, then we'll have done five out of the seven. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we should be able to complete all of them. Now, result-oriented. One of the things that's very important for us to understand if you are to be result oriented, is that you need to have a goal. You need to have somewhere that you are going. The result itself actually bespeaks a goal. You cannot say you have achieved a result unless you had a goal that you feel that now you have accomplished. And of course, in this image, what I'm trying to show you is that if you do have a result you're aiming at, then you have got to orient yourself toward that goal so that you are able to get uh, the, the, the result that uh, you're looking forward to. Okay. Now, result-oriented, let's try to define it. Uh, and uh, the way I would define it is that an individual organization focuses uh, this is actually what is the given definition of result-oriented. And I'm going to try and dissect it a little bit. When an individual organization focuses on outcome rather than the process to the result. In other words, you are oriented toward achieving the outcome and rather than the process that will get you to the result. Now, unfortunately for some, it actually means allowing to bend the rules. And this happens a lot in business. If they want to make profit, it's okay to bend some of the rules so long as the result is achieved. Now, in accurate, we've got to ask ourselves, shall we bend the rules? Shall we bend the rules? Um, now, the way I'll be looking at it is that I'm saying that for accurate, the core values need to be viewed as one whole unit as one whole, a unit. And what do I mean by this? If I'm talking about result-oriented, that when, when people talk about bending the rules or when people talk about ignoring the processes, and so you cheat because you want to get the result and so on and so forth, and that happens even for students, sometimes cheating because after all, they're aiming to get a good grade, so why not cheat in examination? That is essentially what this is talking about. Uh, I want to be able to graduate, so why not cheat by not paying the fees? And that is what is being talked about in the first two bullets that you see there. We are saying that some people bend the rules. They are unconcerned about the process as long as the result is there. Or if we put it in ordinary English, the way people talk about it, is that the end justifies the means, okay? That's essentially the same thing. Now, we've got to take this with some caution, that the end, yes, we do want that end, we do want that result, but what are the steps that will get us there? Does it matter if these steps are firm or we should just move on? It doesn't matter how it is you know, where we are stepping. Well, I'm saying to you, my dear friends, is that for us at Integrity, we want to be sure that result-oriented and integrity are balanced. And integrity lies in everything that we are doing, both the result and the process, both the end and the means. 
So that's essential. That's the reason why I've actually spent a little bit longer on this particular uh, slide because you'll see many people talk about result oriented, saying you know you just focus on the result. What does it matter where exactly you're passing? No, that's not what it should be. You should be able to concern yourself that even the processes, even the rules, even the steps that you're taking, the various actions are all safeguarded by your integrity. I hope it's clear now what exactly I'm talking about. Okay, a few questions that we need to ponder. Um, you know, as we think about being result-oriented, mindful of what I've just been talking about, now, we definitely want to be result-oriented. There is no question about that. That's, a, that's our core value. The question is, where is accurate going? Or I could even make it more personal. Where are you yourself going? I show you a picture of a compass on the right. And this is essentially saying, do you have a compass to your life? Do you have a compass to your life? What are you doing at Ecuray? Maybe you're working, maybe you're studying, but what exactly are you doing? Listen, friends, in all my life, I had a purpose in all my work life. And even when I was at university, let me just talk about that when I was a student at university, I had concern what kind of grade I wanted to get. And I was not going to cheat for it. I was going to do the right thing. And I achieved it. I achieved it. The result that I got at the end doing my mathematical statistics was exactly the result that I wanted. Or even when I went further and I was doing my PhD, I still achieved it because I aimed at it. So there was a goal. There was something that I was aiming at. So what are you doing at Ecuray? That is a question that each one of us, whether it's work or it is studies, that we need to be able to answer. Thirdly, do you know the aspects of your life that need growth or changing? In other words, in the process of achieving this, because you know it does not help. If I can go back to the image that I showed you earlier, it does not help when your goal is here, when the result you want to achieve is here, but you're walking in the opposite direction. And therefore, it's important for you to ask, to ask yourself, what aspects of your life, what values of your life, what actions in your life, what are those activities you are involved in where you need to grow and change so that you achieve the result that you actually want? Because you see, it doesn't help us to talk about result-oriented because the whole oriented thing has to do with your orientation. Your orientation should be toward the result. And then, of course, we ask ourselves the question, what result are you working toward? You know, it's all too common that people actually work, people study, people do all sorts of things without a purpose. Without a purpose at all. Sometimes we ask people when we are talking about parenting, uh, my wife and I, and we ask them, so what is the purpose of having a child? <laughs> and, you know, many people in Africa, they just want to have a child. They are not actually thinking, what, why am I having this child? What do, you, what do I want to achieve? I can tell you, for example, that for me, when I was having our children, I wanted to infuse my Christian faith in them. I wanted them to get the values. I wanted, to, I wanted them to get the priceless gift of Christ in their own life. And so what result are you working toward? Because if you are aiming nowhere, then it means you are on just a, a hobby walk or something like that. But you're not going anywhere. Okay, so when we talk about being result oriented, it's important that you do have a preset goal, a purpose, something that you're aiming at so that your entire orientation goes toward that. If you don't have a goal, 
then it doesn't help at all what you're doing. So I'm saying to you that you need to set goals first and foremost. When you set goals, don't set goals which are so short-sighted. You just want you just want to reach near. You know, if for example your results are showing that you are an upper second student, you shouldn't be aiming at remaining upper second. Can you actually set yourself a challenge to grow to the first class? Be better, be able to excel. You know, when you are result oriented, it's important that you, your goal is very clear and you need to set it, set that goal and say, this is what I'm aiming at. Because when you aim there, it means everything. I remember when I was in high school, our head teacher used to say, aim higher, aim higher. Now, some of us didn't pay much attention to that. And so people just fell off. But, you know, he was telling us that you should always aim higher. Never aim exactly where you are. You should aim higher. That's the purpose. To be result-oriented requires you to preset your goal. Secondly, align your result or goal with your values and priorities. For example, now we do have these core values. Align them. And that's what I was talking to you. That when we talk about result-oriented, the world will define it differently. We do have core values in AQ, right? So we've got to make sure that our goal or the result that we are aiming at is in agreement with the values that we have. Now, this is at the institutional level, but just as true at the individual level. So at the individual level, you need to ask yourself, what are my values? What are my priorities? So that I can be effective and do a meaningful, uh, get a meaningful result out of it. Because if you are not working toward your values, these values here, or even your priorities, I'm afraid what's going to be happening is that you'll be leaving a contradiction. You'll be leaving a contradiction. So whatever values come, you follow. A goal focuses your mind and work. That's why it is so important. Focuses your mind and work and gives you direction and motivation. Making the result uppermost in your mind. If you don't have a goal, then you can't focus. If you have nothing ahead that you're aiming at and you're saying, I want to get that, then obviously you're not focused. So it's very important for you <clears throat> to focus your mind, and that requires that you have a goal. Moreover, a goal gives you better control of the future ahead of you. There will be other things that are distracting you along the way. You know, because you see, having a goal does not mean there are no other things that you may be able to see. But the question is, are they supportive of the goal that you have? You see, all of that comes into being result-oriented. So that you have better control of your future. Otherwise, you are aiming at marrying this girl, but you are looking at a lot of other girls. Now you see, that distraction, the fact that you are looking in many directions will take away your commitment to this one person and you will not be able to achieve it. You are looking at a particular job, I want to get that job, but at the same time, you are also looking, I want to do this and I want to do that. Focus, focus, get the future in your hands. Be in the driver's seat. And this is as true of your studies, of your studies. That in your studies, there will be many things. The one thing that you can be sure of is distractions. They are going to be there. So are you going to be in the driver's seat or have you allowed others to be in your driver's seat? A goal challenges you to higher performance. That's why I was telling you that don't set a goal that's just at your level. Always challenge yourself. And so when you challenge yourself and you set a goal higher, and I'll be saying a little bit more about that later, that higher does not mean unreachable. It just means that you are aiming at a higher performance. Now, I don't need to uh, spend too much time on these seven types of goals that people make. Some of them will be short term, others will be long term, others will be personal. There will be those that are professional that have to do your work. 
there will be those that are financial because you're trying actually to secure your, yourself financially. There are those that are academic and there are those that are social. Those are the seven types of goals that normally people talk about. Okay? So, goal setting must be smart. Should be smart. This word is very commonly used, particularly in strategic planning. And you see, goal setting is itself part of that strategic planning, which enables you to be result-oriented. You see, what happens is, if you make it smart, and I'm going to try and explain what that is as quickly as I can, it helps you to evaluate and see, have I achieved my result? Have I achieved my result? Am I on the right path for my result? So that you are properly oriented toward your result. SMART is an acronym that stands for these five things. It stands for specific. In other words, that when you set your goal, make sure it is specific. Don't say, well, in 10 years, I should have a job. You should have a job. What kind of job? Be specific. What exactly do you want? Uh, in five years, um, I hope I will have a car. <laughs> now that is for me ill-defined. A specific result stretches you higher. When you know it's specific, you're aiming at something specific. It should be measurable. Okay, measurable. So that when you achieve it, you can say, yeah, I have succeeded. I've got it. I've got it. Okay? It doesn't help you to set a goal that you cannot measure that it, you have achieved it. Three, it must be achievable. Achievable. And you remember I said something about that earlier in, uh, in that slide and say challenges you to higher performance. Please make it achievable. Make it attainable. Make, put it within your reach. Put it within your reach, not beyond you. you. You need to look at your own resources. You need to look at your own abilities. Will they enable you to achieve it? One of the things, for example, that I've seen many people, especially when I was in the position of employing others, is that, well, I still employ a few, a few others even up to now, but many people love taking loans without a clear <laughs> income stream. Now, that is not looking at your own resources and uh, somehow you are interested in achieving something, but you're not actually looking at your resources. It needs to be realistic and re or relevant, not pie in the sky, you know, and also time bound, set a time frame. A result needs to be within a time frame so that when you are result-oriented, you are aiming at a particular time to achieve it. Okay? Let me just give you examples of the goals that are set here. And by the way, the goals are easily talked about, but usually in strategic planning, we also talk about objectives, which fall under the goal. Okay, but I'm not going to go that way. For example, you can say, at the end of my studies, I want to get a first-class degree. Okay, so you work toward a first class degree. You, 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 you focus your attention. You focus your energies to get a first class degree. You may get an upper second, but hey, if you hadn't focused, you probably would get a pass or a lower second degree. So it's much better for you to focus yourself and you say, "I'm aiming at this." Now I'm not saying that you should set yourself a first class degree if you realize it's not smart. That's not what I'm saying, okay? Or you may say, by the end of this year, 2024, I want to have read through the entire Bible. That is a very smart goal. You see, it is time-bound, it's measurable, it's all that which we talked about. Specific, attainable, why not? It's attainable to read through the entire Bible. Or throughout my studies, I purpose to finish my assignments on time. So you make sure that every assignment that is given you, 
is done in a timely manner. Now, later on, of course, we'll be talking about timeliness. That's what we'll be talking about. Um, and uh, you remember, it's one of the, that's the next one that we probably will be looking at. But I'm just trying to help you to understand that it's important. I purpose to finish my assignments on time. So what is your goal? Especially as you study. And this, last, this third goal here could go very well with the first goal. I want to get a first degree, so what am I going to do? I'll finish my assignments on time. You know? Other things will come to distract you. Oh, you have some leisure, you have the, some of this and that. But no, I want to focus on this assignment. I've been given an assignment. If I get an assignment today, I want to do it within two days. Because today is, uh, is Wednesday. Friday is supposed to be submitted. Or maybe it's supposed to be submitted on Monday. Then when you finish it on time, you can have your leisure. Why not? You can have your leisure. And I look at the Bible and I see Paul setting himself some goals. For example, in Acts 24, 16, he said, so I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both God and man. In other words, he set himself a very clear goal of never in his conscience having guilt in his relationship with God or his relationship with man, with other people. There's another one here where he says in Philippians that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. He wants to attain the resurrection from the dead. And so he's saying sufferings will come, joys will come, uh, good times will come, difficult times will come, but I want to achieve that. That's the goal. You set yourself that kind of goal. Now, friends, if you have no goal, you'll achieve it. You'll achieve your result. <laughs> That's the one thing that it's not my statement. Many people have said it. That if you're aiming at nothing. My wife years ago used to do something very interesting. She would, um, you know, with the students, because she was counseling students, and she would get a student and give that student a crumpled, let me just get a piece of paper here, get a crumpled piece of paper and then tell that student, throw it. And the student would throw. And then she would ask them, what were you aiming at? <laughs> and the student was aiming at nothing. And that's the problem with many of us. There is no result that we are aiming at. And for that reason, we cannot be oriented toward anything. And that's what this is saying. If you have no goal, you will achieve your result. If you have no goal, any means will get will get the result, will get you the result. And that's not what we should be. We are saying that result oriented, then we need to have a goal. Okay. Now, secondly, result oriented takes intentionality. That's a very important word. I've given a little bit of some. Other words that kind of explain what intentional as an adjective actually means. Okay? It's an action performed with awareness or done deliberately, consciously, and on purpose. You need to be intentional. You see, it doesn't help you to have a goal or to have a result that you're aiming at and you say, I'm result-oriented, but you're not intentional. You just set it there, but you don't intend to achieve it. Someone said nothing in life happens without intention. Nothing without intention. And many of us are very, very good at not having any intention. Another one said, you just must be intentional about your life if successful outcomes are what you seek. Similar kind of statement. So intentionality is to choose a life of deliberateness. And that goes very well with what we are talking about, being result-oriented, be deliberate. Intention leads to action, and action leads to outcome. Okay, we'll be saying a little bit more about action later. So intentionality is one of the key things. Okay, all your activities and processes should be deliberately in line toward 
the result that you want or the goal that you are that you are aiming at that you preset for yourself. You know all of them, the activities, the processes. Because it does not help to say I want to achieve that. I have said it before, but all your activities, all your processes are not leading there. Secondly, results do not achieve themselves. You need to purposefully be rightly oriented toward the, the desired result. Thirdly, no intentionality to achieve a result is equal to aimlessness. Aimlessness. So intentionality is very key to be result-oriented. And may I say, intentionality also takes enthusiasm, which is another of our core values that we'll be looking at later. It takes enthusiasm. You've got to show that you, are, you have real interest in achieving that result. But your intended result should be consonant with your values and priorities. I already said that. Then we need also to bear in mind that result-oriented cannot be divorced from other core values. I touched on it. I give you a picture here of a computer system. What do you need? You have drive bays, you have processors, you have the memory, you have the sound card, you have the video card, you have the modem card, network card, ports, and then of course you plug into power. Now listen, friends. It does not help you to have any of these separately expecting to achieve anything in terms of using the computer piece. It works as one, and then you are able to actually do it. So what I'm saying to you is that the other core values are important to being result-oriented. I want to emphasize this because we've said it. I have said it before, and it's important that we do. Work toward a desired result while you are you, you have you are well being Christ centered and professional, being honest, having integrity, being a good steward, conscious of timeliness, and of course with enthusiasm. Okay. Next, result oriented requires accountability accountability you know when you are when you don't have accountability unfortunately what usually happens you become accountable to yourself and it looks a little bit i'm sorry i must bring this particular example i see pastors i'm a pastor myself but i see pastors who are only accountable to themselves accountable to themselves and obviously they are not conscious of what christ intended pastors to be. Now, every pastor should be. So there is need for accountability. Accountability enables you then to keep on pushing in the direction, in being result-oriented. It may be your supervisors if it's at work. It may be the lecturers when you're still a student. Or if you do have mentors. Or um, independent, and I add here, independent-minded friends, because some friends will not actually help you with accountability. Whatever you bring, they will just say yes. It could be the boards. When I was heading a university, I had the boards and I had a university council that was above me, and I had to give accountability. And I also had a church, the, all the house of bishops, the provincial assembly. I had to keep giving reports of what was happening within the university. So it's important. Then it keeps me aware that, look, as I work, I am working toward the result of ensuring that what I was put here for is being accomplished. I'm result-oriented. And I like these uh, quotations, that accountability separates the wishers in life from the action takers that care enough about their future to account for their daily actions. And Bob Proctor said, accountability is the glue that ties commitment. You hear that word commitment? That's more or less like talking about being result-oriented. So is the glue that ties commitment to the result. 
So result oriented requires accountability. A couple of more, a couple more uh, quotes. Accountability breeds responsibility. Responsibility by Stephen Covey. Some of you may have read some of his books. The late Stephen Covey said many things, especially concerning leadership. And so accountability bleeds responsibility. Because if you know you have someone who is above you, you're responding to that person and it makes you able to actually do uh, become oriented, you know, result oriented. And George Washington Carver, uh, he said, ninety nine percent of all failures come from people who have a habit of making excuses, because that's the alternative to accountability. I mean, the opposite of accountability. You're constantly explaining away, or you're blaming the workers, or you're blaming the other students, or you're blaming the lecturers, and so on and so forth. And he says, ninety nine percent of all failures come from people who make excuses their habit. You know? So where are you? And I think this is a moment for you to evaluate yourself. And finally, result-oriented takes focused action. Focused action. You see, friends, for all of us, whether it's you or it's me, the default mode for me is leisure. Leisure. I like, I like relaxing. I wish I could just rest. And sometimes we go with my wife and family, the children and so on, and we go away where we can rest. We all need leisure. We actually need it. In fact, I should say all work needs rest. I used to teach about work, and I would say if you work, you must also have rest. And I'm saying to you that, however, if you have to be result-oriented, you need to have focused action. Focused action. So that each and every step is moving in the same direction. And listen to these quotes. When you feel like quitting, remember why you started. In other words, there is a result. There is a goal that I, I intended to achieve. And so I'm going to go that way. So sometimes I may feel like, oh dear, it's too much. I can't manage and so on. But then remember why you started. That helps you to be result-oriented. And the other one by Pablo Picasso, a celebrated artist, he said, action is the foundational key to success. If you want to succeed and gain your result, it's important for you to be active. Be active, be active in that one direction, that focused direction that you want to go for. So friends, as I end, result-oriented, have a clearer view of your goal. Have a clearer view of your goal. Result-oriented people have a clearer view of the goals they want achieved, just like this man going to shoot a penalty. He does not want to shoot the ball just in the air or, or hit the poles and then doesn't go in. He's looking at this goal and he wants to shoot there. You see, everything that he will do, his mind is focused on it. His legs are going to move in that direction, even when he runs. But he also has to see the goalkeeper and say to himself, well, <coughs> this goalkeeper may catch the ball. So where is he likely to fall before he shoots? So I'm asking you, uh, do you yourself have a clearer view of your goal? You have a clearer view of your goal because if you don't, you're going nowhere. Result-oriented people end in celebration. They end in celebration. Graduation, awards, Nobel Prizes, whatever, they do not come to people who are not result-oriented. They've got to have a result in mind, somewhere where they are going, and then they can achieve it. So thank you very much for listening to me. May God bless you. Thank you. And I send you flowers. <laughs> Thank oh, you. thank you so much. We certainly received the flower, uh, Reverend. And also thank you for the presentation. Uh, it reminded me of how sometimes we wake up with no goal for the day. So totally I agree. I think it should start with what's the goal for the day? What's the goal for the week? Ultimately, what's the goal for the year? And uh, I will soon be 
getting some leave from work and for some reason I hadn't thought about it until we had this presentation I'm asking myself so what exactly am I going to be doing during the leave what what do I hope to you know achieve during that time when I'm off work so it has really been building it has steered up a number of thoughts in me especially and to plan on what uh, I should do when I'm off work. And I hope that everybody who has listened in from what I'm seeing in the chat also, you've been stimulated as a student, as a working person. Uh, do we just wake up, go for work, go for classes? Uh, you know, we should have um, a goal at the end of the day and, you know, results that we want uh, to achieve. So thank you so much once again, Reverend Khan, Dr. John Sinoni for today. And uh, everybody saying thank you uh, for sharing. God bless you. Uh, Mrs. Petrina Kaoya, thank you. She also sends us flowers. Thank you so much, our mother. And everybody else that has uh, contributed uh, towards this session. At this point, allow me to call upon Professor Michael Kaoya to help us uh, close today's session. Thank you so much, Reverend Colonel Dr. John Senyonyi. Yes, I listened through very intently, uh, reviewing uh, my goals, uh, reviewing uh, the processes, the attitudes I have, even as I take those goals, ensuring that uh, uh, there is integrity throughout the whole cycle, um, that even the goal also reflects that integrity. Um, yes, and I know that at the end of the day, I will be accountable both before my bosses here, but also above all before God. And also the fact that I must always keep my goal in constant view. There are times when you imagine that you are seeing the goal but it's not very clear, and you shoot and you miss it. As um, a sportsman one time, I used to play lawn tennis and uh, table tennis. I still do now and then, but I aim at where I want to put that ball. If I don't aim, it just goes anywhere, and then I achieve nothing. I end up being frustrated. But at the end of the day, when we have done it and we have achieved our goal, our result, and done it in a which also has integrity, then there is celebration at the end. And that's where we all want to be. Um, so let's pray. Father, thank you uh, for what we have learned today, that even as we plan, even as we want to be result-oriented, we must also have a very clear goal and, and that we must now master all what we are doing to make sure that we achieve that goal. And that as we do that, we do that intentionally and that we ensure that all other core values are not ignored, especially the core value of integrity. And that help us also to know that at the end of the day, we must all be accountable both to man, but also above all to you. And that when we have done it and hit our goal, then there's going to be a celebration here on earth, but also above all in heaven. And let that be our joy celebrating with you um, in front of you and of your son, Jesus Christ. And so as we retire tonight, Lord, uh, give us uh, a good night's rest. And tomorrow help us to wake up with a clear goal uh, of what we're going to do and also to um, make sure that we get results at the end of the day. We continue praying for blessings to the Senyanyis. We pray for uh, Mrs. Uh, Ruth Senyanyi. We don't know if she's back at home as yet, but that you give her a safe drive back home, and that she'll be reunited to the husband, to the family once more. Continue energizing them. They are very busy people, and yet, the spare time for us, Lord, may you reward them for what for that uh, sacrifice they do. We are praying all this through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
over to you, Tawera. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Prof, for praying and closing the session. Um, I saw somebody in the chat. Thank you, Prof. Thank you uh, for closing the session. And I saw someone in the chat is asking, uh, I think they said they have a question. So I think we did promise at the beginning of the uh, sessions this year that if you have a question please feel free to send it to me or uh, the dean we shall provide uh, her email again so that all these questions that we have from the various sessions could be tackled in one session so if there are any other uh, others in the session as well uh, please look out for the email um, that will be sent on the whatsapp groups if you have any questions uh, and uh, anything that you would like to communicate, please you feel free to send it to that email and all the questions will be tackled in one session eventually. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Reverend. Thank you so much for sharing. It's been a beautiful uh, session and all those that were able to attend today. And I think it's clear for everyone next uh, week, let's join in in time, let's join in in numbers, let's look out for each other. Uh, from me to you, have a blessed evening.